Tell him I'm taking over What a bus will tell me Speaking tongues and tell me Looking feels and tell me Fire your phone and tell me Breaking all the captivity Would you walk in activity Me against immunity Holy Ghost is divinity What a bus will tell me Speaking tongues and tell me They can feel none to me For joining tonight, I pray for you as you as you are here to meet with the Lord.
you will experience divine the divine presence of the almighty god in the name of jesus where you are i just want you to begin to bless your the name of our maker let's begin to adore him that call him names tell him for thank him for giving you another opportunity to be here if you can pray in tongues why not thank thank him in tongue tonight oh sata baya yama sente de mama mama se ke 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 le 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 say jesus i thank you for counting me among the living i bless your name oh sata baya yama sente de mama se ke 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 le 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 say father i thank you for giving me another opportunity to be here tonight oh sata baya yama sente de de mama mama is not by power is not by mind is by the spirit says the lord of hosts why not exalt the name of your maker why not restore his name oh sete ba ya ya masa de 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 masa de 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 mama se ke 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 daddy i bless your name i thank you for bringing us together under your feet tonight i thank you for what we're going to learn of you tonight i thank you for what you're going to speak to me tonight oh sata ba ya ya masa de 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 mama se ke ke le 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 mama ma tell god to take control of tonight teaching in the name of jesus tell god to empower you more Thank God, tell God to increase you more anointing, more wisdom in the name of Jesus, more understanding in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want you to just tell the Lord tonight, this time, oh Lord, I, I, I've set aside to spend in your presence tonight. Daddy, let it be rewarding in the name of Jesus. Tonight, add to my virtue in the name of Jesus. Tonight, add to my anointing in the name of Jesus. I don't know what you want God to do for you tonight. Why not tell him, oh, satabayayayama, Daddy, I need more anointing. I need more knowledge. Eh, satabayayama. I need more prosperity, more power, more anointing. Oh, my sate ke ba ya ya masende de de mama. This time I'm investing tonight will not be wasted. In the name of Jesus, I need more virtue. In the name of Jesus, say Father, take me to another level of wealth. Take me to another level of prosperity. In the name of Jesus, thank you, precious Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to say good evening again to everyone. If you are watching me on Facebook, this is a time to share on your on your wall is a way of evangelism and god will bless you and reward you in return in the name of Jesus. Tonight I want to continue on our teaching on of the be transformed the other time i i was able to share that the greatest transformation is what god is doing in us you might say to yourself I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. God is working in you. He's taking you to where he wants you to be and he's doing it gradually. I said the other time, I said, don't rush yourself. Just allow God to do his work in your life. And he's, as he's doing it, you're getting better. You're moving from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. So tonight, I'm just going to go further. The other time too, we spoke about the love of God, how God loves us. We say most, most of the time, we don't get to realize how God really love, loves us. We don't really understand the love of Christ. For God to, to send his only begotten son to die for you and I, that means you are number one in the book of God. You don't have to be jealous. You don't... You don't think God loves this person better than you. We are all equal before God. And he loves you just the right way he ought to love you. So you need to understand that God loves you. And you are the number one in the book of God. God. God cares for you. I don't know what you're going through and you're thinking God has forgotten you. God hasn't forgotten you. The scripture says it tattooed your name on his palm. He remembers you every day. So tonight we're going to move forward. We're going to go deeper in this teaching. So tonight I just want to tell, talk to you about what God is doing in your life. In the area of transformation. You might be thinking, yes, I've been praying so hard have been praying for a particular thing maybe you're praying to god to open doors of opportunities onto you and it's like nothing seems to be happening it's like you've not on the door it's not coming up you're seeking for a job and the job is not coming but i just want you to 
to be aware that God is working in your life. There's a gift that is called the gift of awareness. You know, when God does things in, in our lives, don't, we don't just think, oh, it's just, it, it just happens just like that. We need to realize when God is working. So no, the other time someone told me there's always coincidence. In my own dictionary, there's nothing like coincidence. If something good happens to me, I know it is God. So I want you to develop this gift or ask God to give you that gift of awareness so that you can always give glory to God. The scripture says we are serving a God who is a jealous God. So when God does things in your life, he wants you to come to him, return praises to him. So I want to just beseech you tonight, if you search through your life, if you look back, to at what where God has started with you to where will you are today you won't even have any reason to mourn you won't even have any reason to cry you know that we we, we enable you to know that God hasn't forgotten you that God is doing a lot in your life I want you to just say to yourself God is doing a lot in your life what God did in your life today is not accidental he, he, he planned it and he planned it to happen you know the miracle on your way right now is not accidental it is god actually working in you so you've got to believe that god is doing stuff in your life you you know i don't know maybe you you've not learned to pay attention to it but i want to say god is doing miracles in your life even for you to sleep and wake up <laughs> is a great miracle for god to have kept you to this very moment you should know that it is a miracle and God is working in your life. You will never stop working in the name of Jesus. I want you to be aware of the presence of God. The scripture says, we, uh, uh, they said the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. So where you are, I just want you to know that there's God there. You are in the presence of the Most High God. Where you are right now, God is there sitting by you. If you are walking on the road, God is there with you. And there's fullness of joy. I don't know what you might be going through. I don't know what you are thinking about. But I just want to say to you, I'm going to shock you tonight that God is actually where you are. He's backing you up. He's fighting every battle for you. If God to open your spiritual eyes to see what is happening in the, in the spiritual, you will know that God the presence of God is where you are. Amen? Where I am right now, I'm going to shock you. There's presence of God here. You might just be looking at me. Oh, this girl is here again. Not a young girl on social media. You might just be thinking about, will shock you. There's presence of God here. And that is why miracles are happening in your lives. Because there's presence of God where you are. So in anywhere we have the presence of the almighty God, there must be a miracle because joy is there, victory is there, power is there. When we pray to God, God answers us with ease. So you have to be aware that there is presence of God where you are. I normally say this, you can't give what, what you don't have. If you are not aware about what God is doing in your life, how are you going to showcase it? So you, God is on your inside. You have to bring him on the house and let people know that you are serving a living God. Just, I want you to, if there's one thing, I want you to believe. I want you to know that the presence of God is where you are right now. And there's miracles will begin to take place where you are right now if you believe with me. You know, there's going to be a turnaround where you are right now. Only if you believe that the presence of God is where you are. I'm, I'm going to surprise you with a lot of teachings tonight. Do you know something? You are made holy by the power of God. Don't see yourself as, oh, I'm unrighteous. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've said. You are not God is not going to love you any less than the way he loves you. And he said something. He said, you are holy. I know you're going to say, no, I don't agree with her. How can she say I'm holy? I've done so many bad things today. I lied today. You know, I gossip today. How is it possible for me to be holy? Okay. Just open your Bibles with me to the book of Hebrews 10 verse 10. Hebrews verse uh, chapter 10 verse 10 please I, I just want you to have your bibles and so that we, we can flow together tonight because we are here to know more to learn of god i'm learning as well as you amen hebrews 10 verse 10 he said and in accordance with this will of god we have been made holy amen he said in accordance with this will of god we have been made holy consent consecrated 
sanctified through the offering made once and for all of the body of Jesus Christ, the anointed one. That means you and I have been made holy, not because of anything, but because Christ has come to die for you and I. It didn't come to die for some people. It didn't, it didn't come to die for, for some, so maybe for white people or some red people. God has come, Christ has come to die for all of us. And that's is death has made us holy. You know, we are not made holy by our behavior, by our actions. You know, we are made holy because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you believe with me, if you believe in God tonight, then I can categorically tell you, don't look at yourself as an unholy person. The scripture says, it said, we have been made holy. If you can just say to yourself, I've been made holy. Jesus came to suffer because of me. Jesus came to take away all my sin. Your behavior, you can't even bribe God with your behavior. Holiness is in you. You can't give out what you know that you don't have. If you know that you've been made holy, easily will you be walking in holy, holiness. Easily will you be trusting God. Easily will you be talking about the grace of God. Easily will you be allowing people to see God in you. The scripture says, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Easily will you be telling people about what you are enjoying. But if you know that you are not holy because you don't have the understanding, then people will be ridiculing you. People will be belittling you. You just be suffering for nothing. Christ has come to die for you and he has made you holy. You know what? You, <laughs> it is not good enough for you to believe in him. There are many things that we need to believe. You can't just say, yes, I believe in God. You've got to have an understanding. You, you, you have to know Christ. If you say, yeah, I know her, that's her. She's just a, she's a short, tiny little girl. But if you don't know about me, if you don't know the things I do, if you don't know the things I can do, then you can't say boldly that you know me. You might just be seeing me across the street. You might just be seeing me talking. But when you, you are close to me, you will know the things I'm able to do. That This is why it is important for the children of, of God. We are the children of God. We've got to have unbending relationship with him. We have to have solid relationship with him so that we can know him. If you know God, if you know Christ, you will know what God can do in your life. You will even want to pray because you know you are aware about the power of God. You can't be far away and say, yes, I believe in God. It's okay, but you've got to believe in the things God can do. We've got to believe that we've been made right before God. Christ has come to die for you and I. We have been made right before God. You need to believe that you have been made holy. Don't let anybody talk you down. You need to open the scriptures and begin to understand what God is saying about you. He's saying you are his righteousness. You are his daughter. You are his son. He said you are the apple of his eyes. You've got to believe it. You've got to believe it. We, we can't function in what God has personally done, done for you and I if we don't believe it. You can't walk under the grace, under this dispensation of grace, if you don't believe it. If you believe God is far away from you, then so be it. But if you believe God is near you, if you believe God is in you, then you will begin to function the way you ought to function. You will begin to believe the things you ought to believe. God loves you so much. He's made your home his home. He is your God. He is your father. He loves you. Nobody can love you the way he loves you. And he believes so much in you. If you believe that, just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let someone someone else to tell you about this. You need to have the understanding. And that's why God has given us the manual we need. We, we have the Bible to put us through this. We need to really have an understanding of the grace of the living God. Amen. You need to ask yourself what you believe. Do you actually believe God? Do you actually love God? Do you actually, be, you know, believe the word of God in the scripture? I've had someone who told me, say, oh no, oh no, the words in the scripture are just too heavy for me to believe. There's nothing in the scripture that is not real. 
God has put real stuff in there. It's, it's written in there, I love you so much. And he loves you indeed. It's written in the scripture that he cares about you. He cares for you. And he truly cares for you. For him to send his only begotten son to, to die for you, then you should know how how powerful you are in the hands of God. He's, he's loved you unconditionally. What you do today will not make God hate you. Will not make God abandon you. He knows the things you're even going to do. Even the ones you're going to do 20 years to come. He knows them. That's why the scripture says he, he, know, he, is, he knows the ending from the beginning. So you've got to understand the way God functions. You've got to understand God. You've got to understand the power of his righteousness. Do you believe that we, we even if we begin to act right today, or if we begin to act our worst today, that's, that does not mean you are not righteous. That does not mean God has not come, Christ has not come to die for you. You've got to have this understanding and I pray for you today. You're going to be a better Christian in the name of Jesus. You're going to know him more in the name of Jesus. You're going to have perfect understanding of him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hebrews 10 verse 14. Hebrews 10 verse 14. He said by a offering. He has forever completely cleansed and perfected these, those who are concentrated and made holy. He said, by one single offering. That's the offering of Jesus Christ. He said, he has forever completely cleansed and perfected those who are concentrated and made holy. So what you do today can, <laughs> he said, it's something that is permanent forever forever completely cleansed you so that's why i tell people whenever you do something wrong the holy spirit within you will tell you that what you've done is wrong all you need to do is to be humble and go before your maker and say father forgive me i tell you you've, you've even been forgiven before you go to god to ask for forgiveness but God loves um, humble people. He said the humble and going to do what? If you humble yourself, he said it's going to lift you up. He said, but if you are proud, it's going to bring you down. So for us to go to God to ask for forgiveness shows that we are humble. It shows total submission. It, it, it actually shows that we are true children of the Most High God. So I want to say to you tonight, you've got it. You've got everything you need to have. You've got everything you need to function here on earth as a child of the Most High God. You've got power in the name of Jesus. Stop living in the lies of the devil. You've got the power to triumph over the enemy. You've got the power to succeed. You've got the power to prosper. You've got the power to do exploits in life. You you are not a beggar. You are not to be limited. You are not to be on the backside. God has given you the power to soar in the name of Jesus. The scripture says something. It said the glory of the latter will be far, far greater than that of the former. This is your latter right now. You begin to soar in his grace in the name of Jesus because you've got everything you need to get as a child of the most high God. You can't be a child of God and be limited. You can't be a child of God and be abused. You can't be a child of God and borrow. You are meant to learn to the nation. You are meant to do well in life. And I speak the word of God into your lives right now. Begin to soar in the name of Jesus. You need to know that God lives inside of you. You are the house of God. You are the house of God. You need to go out and leave Monday. You need to go out, step out and begin to leave Tuesday. Begin to leave as though you are the child of the Most High God. Go out and begin to leave Wednesday, leave Thursday. Even on Friday, you are happy. Don't just be happy on Friday because you don't go to work on Saturday. Be happy on Monday. Be happy on Tuesday. Be happy on Wednesday. Be happy on Thursday because the presence of God is where you are and in the presence of God there is fullness of joy you have to believe the power of the Holy Ghost within you I have the ability to tell you 
tonight that God has come to offer all you need unto you. All you need to enjoy life on a daily basis is in you. All you need to prosper on a daily basis is in you. All you need to give to the nation on a daily basis is in you. All you need to do well in life is in you. All you need to do is just to be aware. So if I were to be you, I will always pray to God. Father, give me the gift of awareness. Give me the gift of awareness. Let me be aware of what you've done in my life. Well, let me be aware of what you've given me. Well, let me be aware of the grace in the name of Jesus. If you're aware of what God has done for you, then you will never lack any good thing in life. You will never suffer in life. If others are complaining, there's a casting down. You will say there's a lifting up. Not because of anything, but because you are aware of what God is doing in your lives. Luke 10 verse 19. Luke 10 verse 19, it says, Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpent and scorpion. It said, and physical and mental strength, mental strength and ability over the power that the enemy possesses, and nothing shall by enemies are am you i'm going to explain this scripture to you so that you will have a deep understanding of it it didn't say it didn't say i will give you power he said behold when, when god begin to say behold then he's talking about word that is certain and one thing i know about god is the word of god is sure the word of god is certain he's saying to you tonight my son i want you to be aware he said behold i have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents, upon scorpions. He said, and upon physical and mental strength. He said, he's giving you physical and mental strength and ability over the powers that the enemy possesses. So begin to think about the power of the devil. He said, he's giving you greater power. The devil cannot conquer you. It is impossible to for the devil to have dominion over you but you've got to be aware of these things amen you've got to be aware of what god has deposited in in you he said and nothing shall by any means arm you if you ask me today adasa can you give me a pen if i don't know i have a pen my my dear brother i won't be able to give it to you but if i'm aware that i have a pen i will be able to give you willingly so this is it you need to be aware of the power god has deposited in you so that you can give it out so that you can use it you've got it if you can say to yourself tonight you've got it i've got all i need to soar in life i've got all i need to prosper in life no enemy can harm me no power can harm me because the one that is in me is greater than the one which is in the world i've got power to trample upon scorpions and lions i've got power to rule my world i've got power to take dominion nothing shall by any means harm us amen ephesians 2 verse 6 ephesians 2 verse 6 the scripture says we are justified and we are seated in heavenly places so this is it we live in two places you know, I will, I, I, you, you yourself, you know that we have spiritual being and we have physical being. As you are, or as you are physical, you are spiritual as well. But you need to let your physical body know about the spiritual body. So the scripture is saying to, tonight to you, Hannah, in, in Ephesians two verse six, it says, "We are justified." It didn't say we will be justified. It said we are justified and we are seated in heavenly places. So as you are where you are tonight, you are also seated in heavenly places. What happens in the heavenly places? Can anybody de defeat anyone in the heavenly places? It is impossible. So you need to be aware of this of these things that you live, you sit in two places. You sit here on heart, you live here on heart, but you are also spiritual. Your spiritual body is seated in heavenly places with Christ. Do you know you can, do you think you can be with Christ? And one power will harm you. And one power will lead you 
It is impossible. You need to be aware of who you are in Christ Jesus. <laughs> God took his time to create you. He hasn't created you to suffer. He hasn't created you to lack. He has created you to have dominion, to enjoy life. And as I pray for you tonight, you receive the grace to understand Christ. You receive the grace to be aware of God, what God is doing in you. In the name of Jesus, you have to realize tonight that you are free, that you are forgiven, that you are right, that you are peaceful. You need to be aware that you are not under any form of bondage. You are being forgiven. Even before you made that mistake in life, God has forgiven you. Before you did the last thing you did, God saw it. He knew you were going to do it. And you are made right before him. You are peaceful. When we're talking about the peace of God, is where you are. God loves you so much and he's giving you everything that you need. You, so you can never produce something that you know that you don't have. This is why I'm, I'm here tonight to tell you about what God has given you. You've got to produce what God wants you to produce because you have it all. Lack is not your portion. Come on, somebody. If someone is telling you, do you know what? You are under a bondage. There's this um, cost in your family. There's this, oh, so, uh, I, I think someone told me the last time, oh, as a firstborn, you go through a lot, uh, a lot of things. You tell them, do you know what? I'm the child of the most high God. I'm seated here on earth and I'm seated in heaven. It's giving me the power to trample. There's no cause upon my life. There's no generational cause upon my life because I'm distinct. I do not come from the family of this world. My family is in heaven. There's no cause on Jesus Christ. So therefore, there cannot be cause on me. No one can fight God. Therefore, no one can fight me. No one can belittle God. Therefore, no one can belittle me. I am justified. I'm seated in heavenly places. You need to be aware of what God is doing in you. Amen. It took me so much time to, to complete point one. This is a thought series, but we need to actually understand who we are in Christ Jesus. Zechariah 6 verse, Zechariah 4 verse 6. Zechariah 4 verse 6. That's the part that says, not by mind, not by power, but my spirit says the Lord. You know, this was a time that that they were trying to build a temple and uh, 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 in the scripture and everything was going bad. You know, they tried to do it by their power, but nothing worked out. Then the word of God came to them. It says, not by, it says, not by mind, not by power, not, but but my spirit says the Lord. So we can't actually achieve anything in life on our own. That's why Christ has taken his time to dwell in us. So anything you do in life, you do it in Christ Jesus. If you've got the best job in life, you know that God is the one that has actually given it to you. So we need to actually realize that it's not by our power. It's not by my power. It's not by my might. It's by the spirit says the Lord. What you, where you are today, you are there by the grace of God. We need to give honor to whom honor is due. Honor is due to our maker. We can't, if you have this in your, at the back of your mind that you can't do anything good in life without God. You can't even eat and the good, the food will go down well without God. If you understand that without God, you are nothing, then you will give God room to function well in you. You will give God room to do well in you because you always give glory to God. So please people, don't act Accord any glory to yourself or to anybody. God is the one sending people to help you. If you always give glory to whom glory is still, you will allow God to do more and more in your life because he knows that anything he does in your life, you give him all the glory. He knows that if he takes you to higher ground in life, he's going to take the glory. Amen? So it is important to always say it's not by power. It's not by mind. It's by the Spirit, says the Lord. With God, you can achieve a lot in life. With God, you can move mountains. With God, you can do what nobody has ever done in your family. With God, you can, you can even get to where God wants you to get to. Even where you never thought of. 
you never dreamed of, you will see yourself getting there. You will see yourself going places. Only if you know how to give glory to the maker. Amen. You know, we get this bad idea. We say, yes, I can do things on my own. Maybe you, we pray so much on a particular thing and it's not really working out for us. Then we say, no, I want to try myself. I've tried it on God and it's not really working. You know what? It doesn't work. Anything you do outside God does not work. I don't know, but I'm just telling you the gospel truth tonight. If you want to try yourself, there's no point wasting your energy. Use that energy to know God. Use that energy to believe God. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. I will just give you an example tonight. It's just a funny example. And I, I'm, I'm normally a talkative. I talk a lot. I talk a lot. If you give me time to talk for money tonight, if I have the opportunity to, to do so, I do so. And whenever I talk, I always offend people. When I say a thing, like people will tell me to, you know, so I just thought to myself, do you know what? I'm just going to stop talking because when I talk, I offend a lot of people. Then I try to stop talking. Like I just keep quiet. Like even when people are trying to run, I just keep quiet. But I realized that even by keeping quiet, I was offending people because I was giving attitude. You know, I wasn't saying anything, but I was giving attitude. And, and they, they normally say actions speaks louder than voice. You know, then, then it got to me. I got to realize that I was only trying to change on the outside. I wasn't changing on the inside. That was God, what God told me. Then I just said, Father change me let me be the way you want me to be let me if you actually want me to talk let me talk the right thing then i i, I start asking for the grace and i'm getting better and better i'm not there yet but i'm getting better so this is it we should not try to do things on our own let's let just allow god to walk through us let's allow god to transform us it's got the power to do so. Amen? So let's belittle ourselves before God and just let him do it. Anything we do outside God will not even amount to anything. It's going to put us even in more trouble. Amen? The scripture says in the book of Romans 12 verse 2, Romans 12 verse 2, it said, but, it said that do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. He said, but be transformed by renewing your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what is God, God's will. is good and pleasing and perfect will. So what this is telling us that is that we shouldn't try to change ourselves on the outside. Amen? But we should, we should allow God transform us. It should transform our mind. We should allow God change us on the inside. And we will see that that change will come on the outside. That's the way it works. So there's nothing we can do on ourselves. You know, maybe normally we think about evil things. All we need is just to tell God, change my thoughts, change the way I think. And we will see God doing it for us in the name of Jesus. We need to realize that we, we, we will never change what we said or what we, or, or what we say to people. Or, or, or else we allow God to change us. Or else we allow God to change our thoughts. Amen. It's, it's, uh, they said, the scripture said, from the abundance of the heart, the, mind, the mouth speak it. So we need to actually let God go to the root of the matter, which is our thought. Then let that change begin to come from there. Amen. His grace is available. You know, we change by the grace of God, not by effort. And his grace, the scripture says his grace is sufficient for us. Amen. So it is good. Anything we do, we do in God. We don't have to use our efforts. Let God, allow God walk through you. And you will see you will become a better person. You will be transformed in the name of Jesus. You can say to me, okay, Adasa, it is all about God. God is going to do everything. Then what do I need to do? Amen. I'm going to give you points of what you need to do tonight. Amen. Number one is believe. You, you need to dare to believe that God can change you. You need to believe, dare to believe that God is moving in you. You need to dare to believe that God can do unusual in you. You need to dare to believe. Even when all, everything around you does not warrant you believing God, you need to say, yes, 
I am believing God. I am believing God is going to transform me. You need to believe that God is changing you. You need to say, God, I've asked you to change me and I know you will change me. Amen. You need to say, God, I've asked you to make me a better person than I know I'm a better person. You need to dare to believe God. You need to dare to believe the impossible. You need to believe, dare to believe that the change of God is available in you. You need to believe God is changing you and you are becoming a better person from glory to glory. It's <laughs> Atabaya, you are my day. Even when people around you are talking you down, they are saying you can never amount to anything in life. You dare to believe that you are going to amount to something. Not because of anything, but because you are serving the Most High God. You need to dare to believe that God is changing you every minute, every second, every hour. You are becoming a better person from glory to glory. This is why sometimes... It might take, you know, it might take, you we, you, we need to look back at the way we were 10 years, 10 years before. Then you will see that glow better and better you, you will become. You will see, you will see the greatest trans transformation God has done in you. God is changing you. He will never leave you to suffer. He will never leave you to forsake you or to mess you up. God does not mess people up. So, dear to believe God. The second point is study the word of God. Study the word of God. I haven't said read the word of God. It is easy to read the Bible like a novel. You know, we read five chapters in a day. We read 20 chapters in a day. It is different from studying the word of God. And what I'm saying tonight is we have to study the word of God. You know, it doesn't really matter. If you do one hour a day, but you can start with even five minutes of your time. And you can study the word of God anywhere. Right now we live in we live in an easy world. We have our phones. We, we can download Bibles. Even on while you are on the train, you can study a particular verse. You can study it for days. And you will see what God will speak to you about that particular verse. So it is important for us. If you actually want to know who we are in Christ Jesus, we can't do without studying the word of God. I haven't told you tonight that you need to study a particular chapter in a day, but you can study even a, a verse in two months. It is possible. You can study even a verse in one year. You will have deep understanding of it. So you need to... You, need to, you, you don't need to get into the Bible and study for quantity... You know, because you're just doing some word counts, you need to study for quality. Make sure you are getting something out of what you are studying. Make sure it is a, it is important. If you actually want to know who you are in Christ Jesus, you need to get something powerful out of it. So you need to learn to study the scripture. Make sure that you are studying the scripture is encouraging you. At the end of the day, you can even say to yourself, have I been encouraged today by what I've studied? You know, if you, if you, if you even learn to study the scripture, nobody can talk you down. Even when people tell you, you know what, you are under a particular course because you have an understanding that no, I know what I've studied in the scripture. I know what God has told me about what I've studied. And you will see that you will be a better Christian and joining life because that is the wish of God for you. He wants you to enjoy life. Please don't study for speed. I've, I've seen people like six friends, you know, they just study the scripture. Oh, how many chapters have you studied today? How many chapters did, did you study yesterday? No, don't, don't study for word count. Always make sure that you can remember what you've studied. And it's, it's one thing to learn memory verse. It's another thing to study the scripture. I'm not, I'm not against memory verse because you need to note some scripture often. But you actually, what is the most important for you is to actually get into the scripture and get the best out of it. Get the best out of it. Get into a Bible study. You can do it anytime in the morning. Anytime. And you will see that it's going to help you in the name of Jesus. I know it is great to listen to preachers 
as I'm preaching tonight, you are listening to me, but that's not enough. You need personal study of your own soul because that is what we improve it improve you to become a better christian and there are so many materials out there you can buy books you can buy tapes you can listen to messages on youtube but you make sure you're not just listening you are listening to study you are just using those materials to study to know god more so you don't even have any excuse this day to say oh that's why i don't actually understand the bible Anytime I open my Bible, it's like Arabic. There are so many easy translations right now that you can understand. If you ask me myself, I don't actually understand the King James Version, but I understand the Amplified Version more. There's NIV, there's NLT. So there are so many translations you can buy. You can even download on your phone and you have better understanding of the of the scripture i pray for you today you will love to study the word of god the word of god will be interesting to you in the name of jesus it will be an excitement to you in the name of jesus second corinthians 3 verse 18 second corinthians 3 verse 18 it said all of us as with unveiled face because we continue to behold the word of god as in a mirror, the glory of God are constantly being transfigured into a into his very own image. What the scripture is saying to you right here is that uh, as soon as you study the scripture, the more you study the scripture, the more you are being transformed into his image. The image of God is right written in the scripture. If you want to know how God looks, if you want to know the things that God does, it's actually written in the scripture. So it says... The, way, the more we study the scripture, it will transform us to be like God's image, to look more like God, to act like God. Because nobody is perfect. You can't just wake up in a day and say, yes, I'm a perfect Christian. No, but by studying the scripture, it can take you years, 50 years to be transformed into God's image. But one thing I know you will be if you don't depart from studying the scripture. And the Spirit of God will never depart from you in the name of Jesus. So we need to always make it a point of duty to always desire change. To always desire change. Don't say I'm okay the way I am. Always desire to be a better person in life in the name of Jesus. God, God's promises are alive in us. He's doing a lot of job in us. And everything God is doing in you and I will not be wasted in the name of Jesus. So if you actually desire to be a better person, if you actually de desire to be a better Christian, don't be far from the word of God. Don't be far from the scripture. You need to get rid of all of uncleanliness in you you need to have rampant growth in christ jesus amen that's what if you open to the book of first uh, james 1 verse 21 this is what the scripture says it says so get rid of all uncleanliness and the rampant growth of wickedness you know one thing is if the spirit of god does not live in you you can't be empty. Then the spirit of darkness will actually be in you. This is why we need to be aware of what we are doing. We need to know that we, we need to know what we are doing. You can't just, if you say you are not for Christ, you must be for something. You must be for his spirit. If you are not for Christ, then you are against Christ. Then when you are against Christ, then you are for the devil. I pray for you, you will not be for the devil in the name of Jesus. So what can help you get rid of uncleanliness and the rampant outgrowth of the wickedness is by studying the scripture. It's by knowing more of God, allowing the spirit of God to, to, to grow in you. It says, and, and, and in humble, gentle, modest spirit receives and welcomes the word which, in, which is implanted and rooted in your heart which contains the power to save your soul. So the scripture actually contains what? The power to save your soul. But you can't just open the scripture in a day and you think you understand it and you think the spirit of God is right in you. If you don't feed the spirit of God in you, 
then it will be what it will be inactive then if the spirit when the spirit of god is inactive in you another spirit will actually be active in you so this is why as christians we need to be careful we need to be alert and i, I, I i've told you the the simplest way to do it I'm not telling you, oh my God, oh, 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 people, you need to study a chapter a day. No, I've told you how easy it is to just make sure this word of God is alive in you. Just make sure the word of God is active in you. And by so doing, you will see that every uncleanliness in you will be wiped out. Every outgrowth of wickedness in you will, be, will decrease as you align the spirit of God to step in into your life in the name of Jesus. So people, if there's something I want to leave you with tonight is get into the scripture, dig into the scripture, learn, dare to learn the scripture. And as you do this, it will be well with your souls in the name of Jesus. If you will permit me tonight, we still have 15 minutes. Can we use it to pray? Or are you tired of praying? Do you want to pray with me tonight? Amen. Are you tired? I don't know. I can close this broadcast right now. But if you actually want to pray, then I can continue. We can just say two or three prayer points tonight in the name of Jesus. Where you how why not begin to adore your maker? Oh, Satabaya, I must say the name. Okay, Salema, Shaka, Lele, Maseke, Lele, Mama, Mama, Mama. Celebrating for the word you've heard tonight. Celebrating for his love over you tonight. Celebrating for loving you so much tonight. Celebrating for making you holy, for making you righteous tonight. Celebrating him for allowing his only begotten son to die for you and I tonight. Oh, Masata Bayaya Masene the name of Mama. Worship your maker, worship your maker in the name of Jesus. Thank him for everything he's done. The scripture says, even before we started to love him, he has started to love us. Oh, Sate Bayaya Masene the Daddy, thank you for making me righteous. Thank Thank you for making me holy. Thank you for loving me. Oh, Sataka Yelele. Thank you for giving me the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. You're going to pray a very simple prayer point. You're going to say, Father. Give me the gift of awareness. In the name of Jesus. Begin to tell God tonight that He gave me the gift of awareness. I want to know you. I want to know the things you are doing in my life. In the name of Jesus. I want to know the gifts you've given unto me. In the name of Jesus. I want to be aware of your grace. In the name of Jesus. Father, give me the spirit of awareness. In the name of Jesus. I'm not ready to take you for granted again. I now know who I am in Christ Jesus. Say, Father, give me the gift of awareness. Oh, my Satan. That he give us the gift of awareness. We want to know what you are doing in our lives at a particular time. We want to know the way you are transforming us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious Father, for in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, we have prayed, amen. Say, Father, give me the desire to learn of you, to know your words. In the name of Jesus, give me the desire to love your word. In the name of Jesus, why not pray to God tonight? I want the desire to study the scripture. I want the desire to know more of you. I want to know you more. I want to know the power of your righteousness in me. In the name of Jesus, give me the desire to study the scripture. In the name of Jesus, I want to to know who I am in Christ Jesus. I want to be, be able to walk in you. I want to have a deep fellowship with you. In the name of Jesus. That I need the desire to know you more. I want to know more of you. Say, Father, I'm taking my Christianity to another level tonight. Another level of faith. In the name of Jesus. I I'm taking my Christianity to a different level. Oh, Sateba, Yaya, Masenede. 
say tonight I receive the grace I receive the spirit of God in me in the name of Jesus I begin to do the things God wants me to do I, will, I begin to live as a true child of the most high God I walk in obedience tonight I receive the grace of humanity tonight I receive the grace to always give glory to God I will not share his glory, glory with any man in the name of Jesus if I were to be you I'm going to say oh satabayayama send it my mama. If I were to be you, I'm going to wash, I'm going to pray to him. I'm going to tell him to help me in the name of Jesus. But the scripture says, not by mind, not by power, but my spirit, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Begin to say tonight, it's not by my power. It's not by my might. I can't achieve any good thing in life eh, all by myself. I can't do exploits all by myself. It's by the spirit. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I begin to give glory to God more. I begin to exalt God more. I begin to restore God more. In the name of Jesus. I begin to take the leadership of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus. Wherever He leads me, I will go. In the name of Jesus. I'm ready to follow Him to the end. I'm not ready to share the glory of the Most High God. If I were to be you, I would pray tonight. I see if I would never pray again. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. You're going to pray this prayer. I don't know what you want God to do for you. Today is 14th of October. I don't know what you actually, you desire so much. The scripture says, I'm going to grant unto you your heart desire. I want you to begin to tell God right now, Father, I need this, I need that. If you actually need prosperity, tell God. I need to prosper. In the name of Jesus, I need you to open doors of abundance. Let there be an overflow in my life. In the name of Jesus, that it take my prosperity to another level. I'm not ready to borrow. I'm ready to lend to the nation. In the name of Jesus, that it bless me to bless others. In the name of Jesus, supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. Oh, sir. That if you don't do this, people will ridicule you. People will mock you because I'm the child of the Most High God. Ah, masate keke ye 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 ye. I'm the I'm, I begin to prosper in Christ Jesus. I begin to have abundance in Christ Jesus. I begin to experience open doors. Whatever I ask of God is gonna do unto me in the name of Jesus. He's gonna answer my prayers tonight. He's gonna open doors. No man can open and it's going to close doors that no man can close in the name of Jesus say tonight I dare to believe in the power of, of righteousness I dare to believe in the power of Holy Ghost thank you glorious God for in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. If you have, I don't know, it just came to my spirit right now. If you are watching me tonight, you have kids of your own. God has dropped it in my mind tonight that you just pray for your kids. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, my kids will do well in life. In the name of Jesus, you've got the power. You know, to revive the destinies of your kids. Say, Father, let my kids begin to do well in life. In the name of Jesus. We are you want them to be, they will be. They will soar. In the name of Jesus, begin to pray for them tonight. Father, let my kids begin to do well. In the name of Jesus, the scripture says, I and the children you are giving unto me, they are for signs and wonders. Begin to say, oh, Sataba, yeah, 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 yeah. My kids, they are for signs and wonders. They will not die young. My kids will do well in life. In the name of Jesus, if I were to be you, I would pray for Father, let my kids do well in life. Enrich my kids. Anoint my kids. These ones will not die young in the name of Jesus. These ones will fulfill destiny. They will fulfill purpose in life in the name of Jesus. Say, they will attain the stage you want them to attain. When they are calling children upon children, great children, these ones will not be found wanting. In the name of Jesus, they are 
they are sufficient they have abundance they are reaching a greater height in life so shall it be in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen 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 in jesus name i want you to pray again if you are there tonight, you actually married or you are single, you're about to get married, I want you to pray for your home. Say, Father, let your presence fill my home. In the name of Jesus, begin to tell God. He said, it said where the presence of God is, there's fullness of joy. Say, Father, let your presence fill my home. In the name of Jesus, let my home be filled with the presence of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus, Father, let my home be filled with the presence of the Most High God. Daddy, let my home be your dwelling place. The devil will not triumph over upon my home. In the name of Jesus, Daddy, let them be divine visitation in my home. Let my my home be a home that where prayers are being answered in the name of Jesus. Why not talk to God tonight? Oh, that let my home be your home in the name of Jesus. Let my abode be your abode. Let your power rest upon my home in the name of Jesus. No stranger will scatter my home. No stranger is allowed or permitted to dwell in my home. My home becomes a house of God in the name of Jesus. My home is filled with joy. My home is filled with anointing. My home is filled with abundance in the name of Jesus. Begin to thank God for what God has done tonight. Thank him for this great transformation. Thank him for answering your prayers tonight. He says, whatever you ask in his name is going to do unto you. Why not thank him tonight for answering your prayers over your children, over your family. God has answered tonight. Daddy, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to say thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I just want to quickly tell you this on Monday. Please try to join us. Don't forget, we always have weekly devotional and it's only one day a week. You know, if you ask people that have been joining, they will be able to testify of the goodness of God. God has been moving, he's been teaching us and he's been, he's been performing miracles in our lives and he's been, he's been sending his word of encouragement unto us. So if you, if you need God to encourage you, you need to join us every Monday. Then I want to tell you about the project. The, uh, the foundation is, is laying its hands on in December. Our aim is to feed 200 children during Christmas. Because what we come to realize is there are so many children out there that don't have the opportunity you and I have. They've never celebrated Christmas. They've never had even food to eat during Christmas. So this year, God has laid it upon our hearts to actually go out there to feed 200 children during Christmas. And I know as we do this, God will actually bless us in return because he said he has blessed us to bless others. So we need people to support us. If you are there and God has laid it upon your heart to support us, maybe with your time that day, you just want to come out with us, you not know, to be a volunteer to share those gifts to the children, just come out with us. Amen. Just contact us. We'll give you the address. And if you actually want to give us money or supply some gifts to us, contact me on social media. I will tell you how you can actually bring in your donation. Our aim this Christmas is to give every child live chicken, give them some foodstuffs and give them a cash of 1,000 naira each, you know, to celebrate or to buy whatever they want to buy. You and I know 1,000 is nothing, but it's, it's actually something to some people. So please, people, I'm just, I'm just begging you, please come out to support us. And as you do this, God, we actually support you in the name of Jesus. Good night, everyone. It's well, it is well with your souls in the name of Jesus. Thank you for tuning in. It is well. Amen.